Hey YouTube, Chris Battle here. This video is one I have promised after my last Lark PureViz 2 pros and cons video. So this is the promised you like the app review for the actual Lark app. I'm not sure if this works with the original PureViz. It, it may. Uh, I'm honestly not sure. I wasn't. I didn't get the original PureViz, but this will definitely work with the PureViz 2. So that's what I use it for and. Before we get into this app, some caveats. There was some cons that I had in the previous video, and a lot of them were related to software promises, future software promises, which is never anything you should hedge your bets on. But the biggest future software promise that was relevant to me was tracking water drank through the Apple Health app. And that has actually come to fruition since I last recorded that video. So. Let's jump right in. All right, one more caveat. I didn't come here to be judged. As you can see, I'm not very good at drinking the amount of water it thinks I should. So as we go through this page, you'll see a number of things. Firstly, this yellow dot is a newer feature. This is actually just to shame you to let you know where you should have drank. You know, you should be at this point by now in the day. So <laughs> that's what you'll see there. Uh, as you can see, I'm not doing very well. Um, then we have just a, a little graph down here, if that works better for you. Um, then if you see the streak area, the current streak, I have zero days, obviously. My personal best, zero days. And then you have a history here. So, um, and then you can go into details on that history, which is something, and then a breakdown. So one of the biggest cons I actually see with the app as it as it pertains to it right now is as you can see up here, if I'm scrolling left and right, I can kind of go back and see historical data. Well, whatever this UI interface with this little uh, fillable chart here, it just takes a while. So sometimes I'll come in here and it'll say nothing. Like I was on here earlier today, after the time in which I had drank this water. And so it was after around 3.52-ish. And it said 0%. And it took forever to catch up, and I was probably sitting on the screen for like 20 seconds before it all of a sudden was like, oh, yep, you drunk this much. Which isn't, I guess, the biggest deal in the world, but one, I don't come to this app very often, to be quite honest, maybe once a day. When I do come to it, I like to see the data kind of pulling up more quickly than that. So that's one thing that I've, I've found frustrating. Um, but as you can see here, uh, you have this little inbox right here. Mine is empty. When you do have to replace your filter, It'll actually come to multiple places, and one of them is the inbox, and it'll be very aggressive. I'll actually put a picture of what that looks like. Uh, I've had this for a little over two months now, and so I've had to change that filter, and I received notifications a bunch of places on that. So let's go to that top right one that has uh, my initials here, and this is the settings. So uh, I'm not going to jump into everything here. As some of this information is a bit private, but um, name on the first one. I've connected Apple Health to it. Uh, I'm in the U.S., so we're on Imperial, not Metric. Uh, there's my goal. And then here's one of the most, probably what I think is the most important one here is this Quiet Hours tab. Something that I did not, I don't think I touched on in previous um, videos about the Lark PureViz 2 is the LED ring around the top has multiple functions. And one of them that is really important is the blinking that it does sporadically, like after you haven't drank water for a while to kind of nudge you to say, hey, it's time to drink some water. So if you have not set up this quiet hours piece properly, this will be frustrating. I try to keep my room as dark as possible, blackout curtains, the whole nine. But at 159, this bottle could go off and light up the entire room <laughs> if it's already dark. That's how powerful it seems to be. And that can be frustrating to your sleep. And if you were in a sleep status uh, and it did that, it would also probably disrupt your sleep, which wouldn't be good. So you really want to fine tune this as much as you can, and you probably go on a safer side. Like sometimes I definitely go to sleep after three, but it's like I just won't get those notifications at that time. And it actually does say here you will not receive notifications on the bottle or or in the app. The app isn't as important to me because I won't receive those anyway because I put a sleep focus on my iPhone, so that's no problem. But you really want to set these up so you're not getting blasted with lights um, when you're trying to sleep. Um here a new project they have the default tabs i don't know why you'd ever have it on devices unless you were constantly switching your your i guess primary device but this doesn't make any sense 
um, initially pairing product can be done here, although you probably do it through the initial onboarding interface. And then notifications can be turned on or off from here. Um, pretty self-explanatory there. I think in the account profile, it might go through weight and um, maybe lifestyle questions. I, I can't remember, to be quite honest. Um, yeah, so let's see. Let's go to the devices tab now. So that's where you nicknamed it. I mean, I'm pretty generic. I just named mine pure black. You see the filter status. You can shop for other Lark products. You can see your battery here. As you can see, mine's on 40%. You can actually toggle that off too. Let's see if that sticks when you go back. Yeah, so if you didn't ever want to see that percentage number, you could turn that off. Um, another big one there is the filter. Uh, your filter's performing brilliantly. As you can see, I changed this filter age four days ago. Um, and this that's when it was installed. And then this is the volume filtered so far, two gallons. I've actually had to change the filter once already because um, it's been two months. So with that last filter, and I'll put a picture up on this if I can, I was able to filter 27 gallons, and that lasted 60 days before I had to reinstall it. Now here's another piece that I'd like to see improved, and it's a small thing, and it should be easy to do. Let's say I want to install a new filter right now. Let's go through that process. So it tells you these things. You go to next. That all makes sense. And then it says, when did you install the filter? When I first changed the filter on whatever day that was, well, yeah, I changed it on the 12th. I had installed the filter, I think, August 13th originally. That's when I actually received it and set it all up and everything. So to me, if I'm changing the filter, and let's say it's today, which is the 16th, it should automatically default to the 16th. But for some reason, it doesn't do that. So it doesn't default to the 16th at all. So basically, I changed the filter, and it stayed on whatever the original number was. And then I was like, why does it not say? So then once I did that, it was kind of interesting because it still said filter age was still the same, filter was zero. And I'm like, okay, so I have to go through there and manually do that. That's just kind of an annoying thing to do. I think there's going to be less people probably temporarily removing filters. I have not tried that yet, but that's if, let's say, there is certain scenarios where they recommend you actually remove the physical filter. I don't remember exactly what those were. My apologies for that. But there is there is that. Um, and I think the filters, uh, like I said, that's a controversial thing too because that's going to be an additional cost to keep, you know, filters. Uh, if you're doing it properly, you would use six filters a year because it should last you two months. So, yeah, that's that's a bit controversial. But here's where you would just order new filters, install new filters. So, and you can all do that through the app, which is, I guess, cool. Um, another thing you can do if you don't want to activate pure viz on the button or say your button, I guess is messed up for whatever reason, you can do that in the app here, uh, by just clicking activate pure viz, which is nice. And then if you, um, click right here, you can see the analytics, which I think is another cool piece. A lot of what they're pitching you when you get this type of water bottle is impact on the environments and the concerns for that. So here you can see, I'm not sure where they're getting this number from, but say don't bottle water. $339, reduce carbon footprint, that's in pounds, and then reduce plastic waste. Um, current filter performance is here. It'd be interesting if they had one for overall filter performance, because this is my second filter. But you can see the filter age. Uh, and then in this little graph here, you can see, you know, the consummation there, 13.6. And six months is a little interesting because you know it's only technically been out for two three months but yeah so you got that all there and i think that's really cool um so that's great that's the main stuff on on the devices tab um it said settings actually so you can name it whatever you want here i put the generic name of pure black you can put the product color which you can change yourself if you get a new one um product size you can replace filter here too. Product details includes like serial number stuff, so I won't go into that. Factory reset if you need to do that, and then unlinking it. Actually, when I first set it up, my wife had a Mojave Dune one, and it accidentally paired hers to mine, so I did have to <laughs> unlink that. And it was very hard to tell which was which because with, with the way you activate it um, originally. But yeah, so that's that one there. And then if you want to hit this plus, that's how you add like a different type of drink, so water, coffee, tea. You see all the applicable ones there. Um, so that's kind of the big the big things going on with this app itself. Now let's jump into the Apple Health app just to see how the water actually looks there. So if you can see here, and this is another thing that I wasn't sure about. I actually reached out to the customer support team on Kickstarter when I originally backed this to say, 
I was tracking my water through a different app called Waterminder. And basically I had a different cup and it was like, let's say it was 30 ounces. Every time I drank a, a 30 ounce, you know, every time I had to refill my cup, I was like, let me in input that data. So I input that data. Well, when I got the Lark bottle, it was at least a month and a half, I want to say, before they actually got that functionality um, to report to, you know, integrate with Apple Health and report on the water drink. So I was like, should I be holding off and will that data fill in retroactively? Because I don't want to have two different apps reporting double data. And they did say it would ref it would fill itself out retroactively once the um, feature was enabled. And that is true. So as you can see here. Uh, and it will basically show you water from the previous day. So obviously I'm not going to see. Well, it does say today. I don't know. Usually I'm seeing stuff from yesterday. So. Oh, you know, what? previously wasn't showing for the same day, but basically you can see here um, water. Um, daily, monthly, six months, a year. Um, some of this is obviously from other data. But it's really cool. And then you can go data sources. So as you can see, I've got Lark there. And then the previous app I was using to manually track water, Waterminder. But yeah, so that's, I can confirm that works. And that's great. Um, yeah, so that's kind of it. Those are kind of the two main facets. Like I said, I think it'd be great if they could figure out, I'm not sure on the back end what's going on with databases where some of this stuff just renders the data very slowly. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with that. So I think they fix that and then make it default to today when you're, when you're replacing a filter, especially I mean, at least just that specific option. I'm not sure what temporarily removing a filter, obviously you shouldn't have dates associated with that, I guess, but yeah, I'd love it if that was more intuitive in that way. So, um, but everything else seems to be fine. And uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good app so far, uh, at least for iOS and uh, any questions you have about the app specifically, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments and I'll be sure and follow up with you. Thank you.